Uh, my wife, Nicole, has been dreaming about adopting a dog. And after being married to me for eight years, it's cute that she still has dreams. <laughs> but uh, it makes sense that Nicole would want to adopt a dog because uh, she's very nurturing. She loves caring for helpless animals that no one else would want. Basically describes our marriage. But uh, we already have a cat, and I like the cat because uh, we have a lot in common. Uh, we both dislike most human beings. Uh, we both have an irrational fear of rectal thermometers. <laughs> and neither of us wants a dog. Uh, but the cat's left eye's fucked up, and uh, Nicole's convinced it's cancer, and I know she's gonna be a wreck when this cat dies. So I've started recording the cat purring on my phone uh, so that after it dies, I can go to a Build-A-Bear workshop. <laughs> and I'm gonna buy one of those recordable stuffed animal cats, and I'm gonna upload my recording. Uh, so my big plan is when she starts with the ugly crying, uh, I'm gonna make it all better by handing her a haunted stuffed animal. <laughs> But uh, I'm worried that I'm making this toy cat because uh, I don't really know how to handle my wife when she gets really sad anymore. And uh, I'm not worried or scared that the cat's gonna die. Like, I'm scared, I'm getting so disconnected, I'm not gonna care. And uh, my brother died a couple years ago and it kind of messed me up because uh, I don't like really being attached to anything because I'm sick of that feeling. Like everything's kind of coming and going in and out of my life. And uh, this <laughs> might be a problem for my marriage. Uh, it's probably not that great for my wife that she's married to a man with the abandonment issues of the average teenage stripper. <laughs> but uh, it's causing some problems with my ability to relate. Uh, like uh, Nicole got a really bad flu, so I made her a bowl of soup and uh, I put it next to her and I gently kissed her on the forehead, and then I whispered, you don't have to be strong anymore. <laughs> and uh, Nicole keeps making all these new friends, and I never want to meet them, you know, because uh, uh, I let people in really slowly, you know, little by little, to kind of vaccinate myself in case they decide to leave me or die. Uh, in fact, it's probably better than a vaccine because it doesn't give you autism. <laughs> but uh, dogs need a lot of affection and attention and I'm not ready for that. But uh, Nicole wouldn't let up about it. So I made her a deal. I told her uh, she could get the dog but after we fixed our house. Uh, we just bought our first house and it needs a lot of work. Uh, Nicole calls our little fixer-upper Casa Tong uh, because she's racially insensitive. <laughs> and, uh, I I've started calling it uh, Trump Plaza because it's a bankrupt disaster that I'm trying to pretend isn't happening. <laughs> um, but uh, we couldn't afford contractors, so I told her I'd hire a handyman and uh, to save some money, I would help him do the work. And uh, Nicole was skeptical because she knows I'm not the kind of man that does home improvement. I'm the kind of man that wears tight pants and tells people stories about my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she reluctantly agreed, and I was happy because uh, I knew this was gonna take forever this way. And if I could just stretch it out long enough, I figured she'd just give up on getting this dog. And a coworker of mine told me about this cheap handyman named Rick. And I had my doubts about Rick when I discovered he wasn't licensed or insured. Uh, he didn't speak English very well. And uh, uh, he uh, never returned my phone calls. But uh, when Rick told me, uh, sorry, John, uh, I think these jobs are going to take me like a really long time, I said, Rick, you're the perfect man for this job. 
And uh, but Rick was kind of weird. Uh, it's hard to explain. Uh, he'd just show up randomly, unannounced, and uh, he'd never make eye contact ever. And uh, then he would like flawlessly tile a floor or something like that, and they just fucking disappear. Uh, it's like having a magical elf for a handyman. Uh, but uh, uh, he did show me a lot of stuff. He taught me how to like frame and drywall and paint and grout. So I was spending all this time with him, and uh, I, really, I really liked his company because I liked talking to him. Uh, he didn't say much, but when he did, he was real smart about stuff like philosophy and religion. And uh, he was from Bolivia, which was fascinating because I forgot that was a country. And, uh, but he wouldn't interact with Nicole, and it was sort of weirding us out uh, because anytime she would talk to him, he'd just leave. And, <laughs> and so, uh, so I asked him, I was like, hey, Rick, uh, how come you run away whenever Nicole talks to you? And uh, he's like, uh, sorry, John, I have this uh, social anxiety disorder. It's like really bad. And I was like, dude, I get it. I also have this thing where I don't like other people. And uh, he's like, yeah, it's really bad because uh, I can't, like, work with people, so I can't get a job, and I can't live with people, so I can't get an apartment. And I was like, well, where do you live anyway, Rick? And uh, he said, that's the thing. I, uh, I live in my van. I've been homeless for five years. And when he said that, like, I felt awful because he was literally painting our guest room. Uh, And uh, <laughs> that wasn't a joke, but, uh, but you know, it sucked because I had to fire him. Uh, you know, not because I was scared he was going to steal or some, that kind of shit. It was just, you know, I just, uh, I knew if we kept working with him, he was going to need help. And uh, I didn't want to adopt a dog, much less a homeless Bolivian handyman. So, uh, uh, you know, I, he didn't have a job lined up after me. And so uh, to make myself feel better... I decided I would help him find another gig, and uh, he didn't know how to use Craigslist, so I showed him how to do that, and uh, uh, we took a bunch of pictures of the work he did for me, and then I wrote an ad that he could post, and then the emails started coming in, and he didn't know what to do, so uh, I started writing back as Rick, <laughs> and, telling, and then telling people to call me for a reference, and... Uh, Ah, and then he couldn't see what was going on on his phone, so I bought him a Chromebook, which is what you do for your handyman. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and then before I knew it, I was giving this guy a quote on a laminate floor job. Uh, that was like a few days ago. Uh, for the last six months, I've been an unpaid intern at a uh, <laughs> up-and-coming handyman and carpentry business. Huh. So I see Rick almost every day, and uh, or talk to him at least, and uh, he just got a van, a new van, and uh, he's looking for an apartment, which is like a huge step. And he finished all the work at our house, and uh, you know, now it feels like a home. So I told Rick, you know, man, since I bought this house, like, you're the best thing that's happened to me. And uh, he said that uh, I was the best thing that happened to him in a long time too. And uh, I know it's weird that... I literally have to pay my friend to hang out with me. But, uh, uh, but Rick is my friend, and for the last couple of years, I've been good at making those, and I was starting to think there was something wrong with me and that it wasn't going to get any better. Uh, but you know, I don't know. And uh, now that all the work's done at the house, I told Nicole, we're going to get you that dog. So a couple weeks ago, she told me to clear out my schedule on a Monday night at 7 o'clock for an adoption event. And I was like, what kind of dog adoption happens on Monday night at 7 o'clock? She's like, oh, not for the dog. I want to adopt a baby. <laughs> so, guys, <laughs> if she says she wants a dog, <laughs> just get her a dog. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.